Courtney Bailey writes in Supersizing America, Fatness, and Post-9-11 Anxieties, cheap fast food thus gets linked to lower class vulgarity, irresponsibility, and closeness to the body. Although this seems like a negative connotation, college kids fall precisely into her description. Vulgar, irresponsible, and very close to their bodies and others. So it makes sense fast food and drunk food flourishes in college towns like New Brunswick. And the king of fast food at Rutgers? The infamous Fat Sandwich. From the 1970s to the present day, fat sandwiches are a must-eat food if you're part of the Rutgers community. The food landscape is always changing, but with all these new foods, is it the end of the historical fat sandwich? Before the fat sandwich was created, the grease truck's signature product was the gyro. Rutgers grease truck started in the late 1970s with nine trucks. Then, in 1979, the first fat sandwich was created, the Fat Cat. The Fat Cat comprises of a double cheeseburger, lettuce, tomato, french fries, mayo, and ketchup. Students flocked to the trucks to try this strange but new combination. In an off-camera interview, Susan Conover, who was completing her undergraduate degree in the late 1970s, recounted how her and then-boyfriend, now-husband, visited the trucks frequently. The fat cat was all the rage. You weren't a Rucker student unless you tried a fat sandwich. Because drinking age was 18. And what we would do is, um, you know, we were 18, so we were allowed to drink. We'd crawl out of the pub. The grease trucks were right outside uh, the Bishop dorms, which are Tinsley and uh, Clothe- Tinsley and um, Mettler and all those over there. They were parked out there. You'd go to the grease trucks, pick something up. In the early 90s, the trucks were gaining popularity, but the town lost the grease spot that precedented them all, Greasy Tony's. In fact, it's funny. My brother graduated here in 1975. Um, he graduated the year I came in. And the other day, I was telling him that you were going to come and interview me. And I said, and he, first thing he says, tell her about Greasy Tony's. The, the tagline, they're literally, their advertisement for Greasy Tony was no charge for the extra grease. And the portions that they gave you were massive. Greasy Tony's was located at Easton Ave for 30 years until a Rutgers student housing project forced them out. Greasy Tony's was gone, but the spirit of grease lived on through the grease trucks. According to a New Brunswick Today article, the New Brunswick City Council banned trucks from city streets in 1992. Attorney General George Gussis and a Rutgers administrator, Robert Speer, worked out a deal to move the trucks to a nearby parking lot titled Lot 8 at the corner of College Ave and Hamilton Street. Lot 8 became the home of the grease trucks, where they were open 24 hours a day. Karen Metheny wrote an article about the spaces that food creates. In the Fat Sandwiches case, Lot 8 became a space to eat, meet other students, and experience the Rutgers community and campus. That same year, PJ's Grill and Pizza opened at 166 Easton Ave. Pizza was always a popular fast food at Rutgers, with over 13 establishments selling pizza in the area. On Friday nights, pizza places like PJ's are usually packed to the brim with drunk and hungry college students. When they're drunk, they're just like, oh my god, I'm gonna get like the greasiest, like grossest, cheesiest, Thing. Stuff Your Face is another Rutgers favorite, opened in 1977 with pizza and strombolis and the famous fish bowls. The food is like pretty cheap and it's like good food. Like, like pick out food. Like patachos are the best. In 1998, Rutgers sophomore Daryl W. Butler was tired of the same fat sandwich offerings, so he suggested his own sandwich creation. Okay, well, we obviously we need the bread to make a sandwich, but we have French fries, chicken tenders, mozzarella sticks, and some other good assortment of stuff. The sandwich was dubbed the Fat Daryl. It seemed as though the popularity of fat sandwiches and the grease trucks had nowhere to go but up, but in 1998, a community member complained about the noise and garbage the trucks created, and the trucks were ordered to close at 2 a.m. In a Star Ledger article, reporter Mathley Riley wrote about how important the position of the trucks were to getting customers. There were two hot spots, a clear shot at anyone entering the grease zone from the east. The other hot spot is directly across, where students stepping off a campus bus would land. The trucks rotated position once a month to share the hot spots. The trucks faced a challenge in 2005 when the university banned sandwich names, including the Fat Bitch, the Fat Filipino, and the Fat Dyke. Covered in a Star Ledger article written by Rosa Serrani, some said the university was being too sensitive, while others said they were glad the names were dropped. 
In 2009, the fat sandwiches appeared to have reached their peak when Man vs. Foods' Adam Richman visited Rutgers to complete the fat sandwich challenge. Finished five in 45 minutes, and I gained the eternal honor of adding my name to the menu. He lost, but fat sandwiches became nationally known. In the following years, the sandwiches still thrived, but other places were catching the community's eye. On June 21, 2011, KBG, or Korean Barbecue Grill, opened its doors at 6 Easton Ave. KBG is a low-key, counter-served joint specializing in create-your-own Korean tacos, burritos, and rice bowls. Mixing Korean barbecue and Mexican dishes, KBG became a Rutgers favorite. Through the study of restaurant menus, Lior Givion and Naomi Trossler concluded that in ethnic restaurants, the acceptance of ethnic dishes become both a matter of personal taste and mainstream. The more present these ethnic restaurants were, the more the community was accustomed to them and craved the dishes. Most of the grease truck's owners were immigrants from Lebanon or Egypt and incorporated Middle Eastern dishes in their menu. Over the years, Easton Ave and New Brunswick became home to various ethnic establishments. In 2013, the grease truck's corner faced the same fate as Greasy Tony's. Rutgers officials kicked trucks out of Lot 8 to make way for construction for new student housing. The truck's last night was August 8, 2013. Well, as many Rutgers students, I'm disappointed in the loss of a uh, fable tradition here. It's been over 15 years now that the grease trucks have been in Lot 8. By 2015, the Are You Hungry truck was the only truck remaining from the original nine to be run running on the Rutgers campus. From 2013 to 2015, it operated outside the Alexander Library. As the fat sandwich seemed to fade away, specialty fast food was rising. Peter Genovese wrote an article in the Star-Ledger about the specialty food truck craze, specifically the Outsider, that served beef sliders and truffle fries. Although the Outsider isn't around at Rutgers today, other specialty fast food is. In November of 2015, Fritz's opened it on Easton Ave. Fritz's sells fresh baked goods and serves homemade seasonal soups, salads, and sandwiches made with local ingredients. Fritz's takes a bit longer to serve food than most fast food joints, but it's worth the wait. A new Brunswick branch of Taqueria also opened up in 2015. As a Mexican street kitchen, Taqueria offers typical street Mexican food and a backyard patio. Well, no, the other places, I feel like the other places aren't really like, they're more healthy. Like the taqueria place, like you can totally like switch things out to make it healthy. But then like the um, fat sandwiches, they're like legitimately just to fill you up with like a bunch of just junk food all in it. And like sober you up too if you're drunk. In late 2016, when the yard was fully developed and running, Are You Hungry retired their truck and opened a brick and mortar store where it plans to serve fat sandwiches forever. The grease trucks are not what they used to be, but they impacted all of Rutgers and other universities as well. Fat sandwiches are like a staple Rutgers thing. And so I don't think they're gonna like go out of style because they've been around forever and they haven't gone out of style. And I feel like they're just gonna remain popular. It's one of those things that they're made, like they're created, and they got so popular that they're just not gonna stop being popular. Like that. The greasy fat sandwiches reigned for more than 35 years, but it might be time for another, perhaps healthier dish, to take the spotlight.